So in today's episode, we're going to be recording the drums. Sadly, not in this brilliant cathedral in Durham, with its amazing reverb, but back at the studio. We're going to be tuning the kit. We're going to be trying to get rid of this annoying rattle. And I don't mean Keith, I mean the snare drum. Then we'll be setting levels, gain, EQ, bit of compression, and then the recording. So while I continue to look around this fantastic cathedral, I'll leave you to watch how we recorded some drums. The issue with the snare is if Paul hits Tom one, well, the with the snare on, on. <laughs> that tremendous vibration of the... So we've tried in the past to detune or retune the tom to stop that happening. So if we did that, just to show you, so if we detune that down a bit, So that's worked. Yeah. But then if you do that, then it, it's the same, same tone as Tom 2. So what we perhaps need to do is slowly increase the pitch of Tom 1 a bit at a time until it starts to resonate the snare. I suspect actually in this track it's not as critical. I think when we did this last time, there was a lot of Tom work without the snare. That, that one's low. I mean, most of the toms are in pretty good tune because we tuned them last time, but we've always had an issue with the tom and the snare, the tom one and snare. Um, so and we happy? Oh, uh, well, this is what happens now. <laughs> I think it's the bottom skin of the snare that is tuned to the same resonance as that okay. one. So I think we tighten the top to the, to the tone that you want and then adjust the bottom to try and get rid of that. Of the snare? Of the snare, yeah. Okay. And even with all this trouble, we're still not going to trade him in for a drum machine. <laughs> Bad, is it? You've got to check the others as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. The other thing we could try is we've got another snare drum, and we could see if that snare drum has the same issue. Mm -hmm. I'm saying we're going to swap it out, but just out of interest. It's a lot better than. It was originally though. It is. I don't think we're ever going to eliminate the um, rattle. Um, it's just whether. Well, that's what a snare does, isn't yeah. it? So. Can you go any tighter on the snare? Just one of those, one of those, right in the centre, mm. underneath the snare. See whether that would. It could be that this just destroys the snare sound. Mm. The snare doesn't sound very good now. Though. No. to look into is trying to find a thinner damping material mm. I think what was happening is that the snare uh, was rattling a lot on the center of the skin and we just need to take that rattle away but obviously not to the extent where it deadens the snare sound when you're hitting the snare no. mm. Oh, a 
I'll leave that one with you. Yeah, I'm afraid we recorded that. <laughs> That's one for the edit. He's always coming up with interesting yeah. percussive ideas. So. <laughs> oh, that's a wind instrument, what are you on about? Oh. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that uh, we need to be certain of when we're setting up the overhead microphones is that we don't get them out of phase. Mm. So we um, take the centre part of the snare drum and we measure the distance to the first microphone. And this, that's 47 inches. And then we have to make sure that the other one is within the same face. So I'm going to get Paul to stand up and hold the tape measure and I shall adjust the microphones accordingly. Okay. So what distance is that? That's 47. And um, back to this one again. Forty-seven. Okay. Um, so we're equidistant for the overheads from, from the, the snare. snare, but they are slightly. They might be slightly out of phase for the toms and the cymbals. You kind of want them at the same level mm. if we can. So what I might need to do is we'll put that one back up to a bit higher and then I'll just move that one back. So measure that distance again in the centre to that one. Okay. The snare mics, um, we've got the bottom one pointing pretty much just offset to the snare itself and then the top one is pointing again just off center a hi-hat mic i like to try and have it coming back so it, it doesn't the spill of the um, snare doesn't hit and within this microphone is a capsule that makes it hypercardioid so, so the idea of hyper Hypercardioid is that it just picks up the signal as locally as possible. The cardioid pattern is like a heart shape like that. So everything that's from the side and in front of the microphone is picked up. A hypercardioid is a narrower heart, so it doesn't pick up as much from the sides. So that's going to pick more up from this area than it is from here. So therefore, it, it reduces the, the amount of spill from the snare. Okay. I'll leave you to listen over the phones. Hello. Hello. So the next task is we've got to start to set the levels for each of the microphones. But he's fucking about with his chuffing snare drum again. Bloody dramas. <laughs> <laughs> and now here's Paul being caught on camera after we've set up the snare and positioned the microphones. Are you comfortable? Tell you to fuck off. How are your bollocks? Are they feeling in the right position? Have you got them chucked in just quite nicely? You're not pulling a front wedgie. Look at that grin. Don't you just <laughs> love that face? <laughs> well, I can't see it from here. <laughs> right. So, um, the next step is to set the gain levels and the input levels. So, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm, we're doing a bit to camera, so just shut the fuck up and sit there and do as you're told. Um, <laughs> just for once. So, uh, what we have on the screen here is the drum map that we just quickly put up. So, what, right. this, what this spreadsheet does is, it's, the, these numbers are the patch bay numbers in the drum room, and what's actually plugged into each of those. This shows where the um, so the snare tops going through the GA73, then into the EQP, 
and then that's going into the RME line input 3. The snare bottom is going into the 502, from there it's going into the uh, AEQ and from that it's going into the RME line 4 and so on. So what happens is the Octel Pre interface and the Focusrite 1820 interface are linked to the RME and that routes everything into this interface mm -hmm. panel here. Paul, can you just play, um, I'm setting up the room mic first, so just play the whole kit, uh, any pattern you fancy. So, I want to get the level so it doesn't peak, so we're just peaking a bit. So that's the room mic, um, as it's just the room mic, I'm going to put a bit of EQ on here. So I'm just taking a bit of the bottom end out on the roomy uh, mic. And what I'll probably do is just put a bit of air on the top. So that's brought the snare up a little bit in the room mic. And it's giving a bit of zing on the cymbals. What, when you refer to air, you're talking about very high frequencies. Um, it's usually over about 8, 8k. It just gives that little bit of snizzle on the top. That, that's what snizzle. The, snizzle. How else do you describe it? It's just a little bit of high frequency. Yeah. So, uh, and that was on the room mic. We're yeah. now looking at the overheads. So they skull at five and six. So this is these two here. Okay, can you just do the symbols, please? So that I know then that when it goes into Pro Tools, the the mics aren't distorting or peaking on the way in. That one's just peaked. So. And that's the very particular value of using this interface. Yes, it, it allows me to measure the input gain before I even look at Pro Tools. Yeah. Um, so I can actually set up a fairly balanced. Uh, set of drums using this interface before I even load up Pro Tools. At the moment Pro Tools isn't even loading on the uh, computer. There's only one reason I think you should hurry up. What's that? He's enjoying himself far yeah. too much. <laughs> this, this is a slow process and I know. it's yeah. one that's definitely worth doing. Now, I know some engineers like to put a bit of compression on the overheads. I don't because I like to get the ring uh, of the cymbal to have a natural decay. And when you put the compressor on, it can actually change that decay. Change the sound shape. So, um, yeah. that's something you can perhaps do in the mixing stage, but I, I wouldn't do it on the recording stage. So, you're saying your preference is to lower the gain so that you don't lose the entire shape of the cymbal sound? Correct. Now, EQ um, or gain or both? It's a bit of EQ. Um, there right, we go. We've got a bit of bottom end in now. It's better. better. So it's a balance between what I'm pushing out of the This being the inside uh, mic, mm -hmm. you want more of the top end to get that click. That's the, and then the out mic will hopefully give us a bit more of the body. But the outside mic doesn't know it. Here we go.
Okay, Paul, we'll go for the snare now, please. Snare. I'm going to add some compression to the top snare mic and I think I'm going to put that compression in before the EQ. So, is this to stop it resonating too much and this is to tighten, shape the sound, tighten, tighten, the, tighten the sound shape? Yeah, so the GA73 output, instead of going into the EQP, I'm going to send that to the WA76 and out of the 76. So the WA76 is the compressor. It's this compressor down here. Can you just do single hits as if you're doing... That's... So we probably want to drive it a bit more than that. So we've got a, a, a fast attack, mm -hmm. so it kicks in as soon as it hears the signal, yeah. and it's releasing it quick as well to give it a snap. Tom two. Tom three. To my untrained ear, I couldn't really hear the issue with Tom two, but could hear the difference once you uh, once you plugged it in correctly. But um, I would have happily just recorded on the room. And the overhead, sadly. Which is probably why I'm the engineer and you're not. Well, it's probably why I visit the audiologist <laughs> more often than you do to have my ears cleaned out. <laughs> now then. So that's got a ring on it, but again, I'll, I'll use the EQs and Pro Tools to... This is quite a limited yeah. EQ. Okay, can you give me some hi-hat, please? If you cut out too much at this stage on the EQ sweep, you can't add it later. When I'm trying to listen for the sounds, it's difficult to do when someone's talking. <laughs> well, you want me to ask questions? Yes, well, there's time and a place. <laughs> <laughs> this could go on the outtakes, then. I'm, Get on I'm, with it. I'm sure there'll be several, you know, engineers there going, yes, this is a... The, the, the case in point where you sat there trying to get a nice sound and somebody's rattling on in your ear. Get your ears cleaned out. Get your ears cleaned out. <laughs> right, so what am I looking at? Don't make me laugh, I get camera shakes. Scarlet Mike 3, and I'm getting nothing. Oh, I know why. I need phantom powering. There we go. Now that's got a boxy sound. So I'm definitely going to EQ that a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sweep. So you can hear a real... There. Yeah, so you can take that out at this stage. Yeah. Remind me why that particular microphone needs the phantom power. Um, it's um, 
So there are some microphones that are condenser mics, and condenser mics you put a charge, an electric charge over the um, capsule, and it's a change in voltage as the capsule moves that creates a signal. And why the condenser mic on this particular part of the drum kit? Uh, again, mic choice is, you know... Very subjective. Very subjective. Okay. Um, okay, let's go on to the ride cymbal. Again, I've got so I've got a ring on that and that is the resonance of the um, China symbol so I'm gonna go and see if I can find that as well so we say go and see if you can find it by sweeping up and down the EQ yeah. range and then cutting out the rogue elements so it's it's all down here so what I could do is put a low cut taken quite a yeah so, so that's quite a low frequency at which that was occurring yeah. so with it being the ride simple it doesn't matter if he's cutting out I mean at nearly 200 Hertz I'm starting to roll off quite a bit of the but it's it's a very toppy high-end mm. all right then, mate you can play the whole thing now please So now I'm just looking for anything that peaks. So now it's playing more naturally. It's going to be hitting the drums at the, that level. So we're not peaking on anything there. Nothing on there. Okay, see, so Tom one. What's Tom one doing? That just peaked as well. Okay. Play the pattern that you're going to be that I'm going to record you on now. See when he's doing his actual what we're going to record, yeah. he plays lighter, and when he's yeah. Well, that's the nature of this piece of music too, as well, I suppose. When he's just doing a, a whole kit practice, he's got something else in his head. No, it's just drummers. When they're, yeah. when they're free to play whatever they play, they yeah. play heavily no when they're actually playing. That's, yeah, I think that's what I was saying. OK, can I have a break now? And while, while we're just listening to that, it might be worth here adding at this point why we can trust what we're hearing um, because of the way that you set up this studio acoustically yes the um, with all the um, acoustic treatment in the room um, with yeah, the, just look up at the ceiling the clouds that we've put in it uh, controls the resonance of the room so what we're hearing is just the music and the instruments and not the room through the speakers and we're not hearing the room correct tom tom one two three and four please Okay, can you go for cymbal overheads? And right cymbal. And hi hat. Okay, play the kit. OK, 
Okay, so we'll go for a levels recording. So we'll go through it, record it. You can come in, check the levels. Let's make sure nothing's peaking and distorting. Now you'll want a clip track, won't you? Okay, roll it. That was all your fault. Okay, what did I do? I don't know, but it made the computer jump and skit about. But you know, if anything technically goes wrong, your presence <laughs> makes that happen. So it's Absolutely. Stop giving off that electronic vibe from in there, will you? It, it wasn't a good take anyway, because I'm still having some level issues. Okay. So don't panic. Okay, try again. Um, no, I'd like you to come and have a listen to the sounds because I, I, when we do get a good take, I don't want you to say, oh, that sounds rubbish. So you should have a little bit of fold back there. So we'll okay. see how well, that I'd, I'd like to listen to it through again just to make sure that um, my part is acceptable. And do you want to listen to it with the music? Yes, please. But I guess this is what a lot of people don't see when they think of a musician as going into a recording studio and they go in, pick their instrument up, play it a couple of times and job's done. It can take, there are, I'm sure there'll be sessions where the drummer might have taken two or three days just to get the drum sound that they want. Mm -hmm and the engineer to get the mic levels just as they want and it, you know, EQ'd and compressed the way they want. And so you could end up, you know, taking a whole week just to do one drum track. It depends how you work as well, because it strikes me that you've got a very democratic process going on here with Paul. So you, you set it up the way you think it should be and the way you think it should sound. You get him to play, you get it to record it, but then he's 
he comes back in here for a discussion about whether he likes the sounds. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you, well, you, and I wonder whether that actually happens in a lot of recording uh, situations. I suspect it does. You, you've got to make sure that the musician is happy with how they sound, because at the end of the day, it's their name that goes on the ticket. Um, so although an engineer or a producer might have a particular sound they've got in mind, they have to persuade the musician that that's the sound that needs to be played. Are we ready? How many times do you want to go through it? Do you want to just keep playing and then when you think you've got one, just let me nod and I'll stop the recording? Yeah. Well, you can play it as many times as you want. So um, I'm listening to see if I hear a mistake or a timing issue that Paul might not pick up on when mm -hmm. he's playing. So if he says, oh, no, that's a good take, I can say, no, it's... So although I'm not hands on the, the faders now, I am listening for his performance. And then he glitches, you know, as the recordings go in, if the piece of equipment glitches, then Paul's not going to know that, but I will, so... If it's just the odd snare beat, I don't worry too much about that because we know we've got the facility of editing. But you don't want to edit too much. The odd bit may be, the odd beat may be. But if you're ending up editing the whole drum part, then it's just not a good take. That's starting to sound sweet. And the likelihood is he'll warm into this. If he plays it two or three times, then it becomes a bit more fluid. Let's not underestimate how complex a piece this is with the timing issues, with all the different four and three patterns. It's where he's syncopating it. Yeah. Syncopating over a seven eight is tricky. And there isn't any room in this song to just drop him in, is there? No. And to be honest, when you're doing drums, yeah. especially when this cymbal crashes, if you try and edit into the middle or um, drop into that, it just becomes, can be done, but it's, it's just easier to get a good take. Yeah. And that's the thing with drums is, it's not as easy to, Although we're doing a playlist now, so that's recording every version, and then we can comp uh, the best bits together. Yeah, even joining those up on drums, so like you say, you've got cymbal crashes and Absolutely. so on, it's very challenging. He's relaxing into it now, you can tell. about these interfaces whereas before the sound came into um, it's going to loop round again whereas before we were folding back out of Pro Tools that created a latency um, but with these interfaces that we've got now the fold back to the headphones is through the um, the interfaces, so everything Paul's playing is getting back in his cans pretty much instantaneously. Whereas when it went through Pro Tools, it was a good latency on it, and so it always sounded like you know out of time. Okay, Paul, uh, kick please.
Okay, on to the snap. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, Tom one. Tom two. Oh, what is that? And four. Overheads. Right symbol. Hi hat. Right, we shall, I think. I uh, can put it on a loop from the beginning of verse one to the end of the song. Do you want to do three takes straight off? Yep. yep. Then we'll have a listen to those and then if we need to take another one we can do. Okay, from that recording, when we were playing the ride cymbal, it was resonating the China cymbal. Mm -hmm. So as we don't use that in this Recording. I wonder whether we just take that off the sure. uh, the rack. Do you want to take it and take that side? Okay. Well, we'll then go for another one. Okay, mate. Are we happy with that take? It's not bad. There might be some corrections. Needed. Some editing. Always yes. some editing.